Hello and welcome to a rainy day here at a humble Highland home. Rainy days are generally a cue for me to head undercover either into the polytunnel, the greenhouse or inside the cottage. I accepted a long time ago that I will always be busy and always will have lots of things to do. But it's how I manage this that matters and sometimes I have to park things for a while until the right moment arises. Today I've planned to change this year's peas, beans and celery bed round as everything has come to the end of its growing cycle and it's time to plant out some winter hardy brassica seedlings to keep the ground covered and to provide a welcome early crop next year. If I were to always wait for the perfect day and the perfect weather, I would get very little done. So today I'm going to embrace the day and everything that it brings, as these plants really need to go in the ground today. There's something quite sad about pulling all these plants back after the beautiful flowers and the scent that the sweet peas gave us throughout the summer months. But that's one of the lessons that autumn brings us, is the joy of letting go. A lot of gardening jobs can continue whilst it's raining, as long as you take a few precautions along the way. Knowing the type of soil that you're working with is important, so you know if there's any drainage issues or possible areas of compaction. I know where the water lies in this garden and it's not where I'm going to be planting today. I avoid walking on my growing spaces as much as I can to minimise any possible ground compaction, but this should become less of an issue as these growing beds become more established. The wood chip pathways either side of the growing beds work well for us so there's no real reason to be walking on the growing beds. The bed next door to the peas and beans was this year's brassica bed where we interplanted some broccoli with the red and green cabbages. I planted the cabbages quite close together so I can thin them out and gain an earlier harvest and then allow the rest of them to grow on to their full size. I place some excess cabbage leaves over the top of this growing space to cover the soil and to allow the worms to come up and do their yummy stuff to put some nutrients back in the soil as cabbages are very hungry plants. So I will allow this bed to rest over winter time. This is where the peas and beans can be incredibly helpful as they're a provider of lots of fertility back into the soil. They definitely give back more than what they take. So this is gonna be the perfect environment to plant our spring brassicas as they are the very hungry plants and thrive on the nitrogen that the beans have left behind as a precious gift. Now that the frames have been removed, I can start work to harvest the last of the green celery. I'm also using this time to clear any leftover weeds. Well, that's one of the benefits of working in the rain, is the weeds are a lot easier to remove, especially those with a long tap root, the likes of dandelions. Other benefits can include minimising transplant shop for seedlings, planting them into damp ground rather than dry ground and also it can help to keep insects at bay and you can keep you as the gardener cool and has the benefit of watering the plants for you.
As part of our no dig approach to the garden, I'm adding a couple of inches of homemade compost on top of the garden bed, which I will plant directly into. This is when you can really see by making your own compost, how much money you save and how much waste product could have been going to landfill. As well as benefiting the areas in the garden on a practical nature, gardening in the rain can have added benefits to you too, just by being outside and experiencing all the seasons in all the weathers, working with nature, not against it. And sometimes we need to remind ourselves of all the health and well-being benefits of being in the garden. The smell of the earth and nature can improve our mental health and this smell is called petrichor and it's made up of geosim, ozone and plant oil compounds and this can create a calmness after a stressful event and it can also be a well-known mood booster. So I try to get outside as much as I can, especially when the light levels are low and the days are shortening, to keep my vitamin D levels topped up in the winter months when we tend to hunker down for the cold weather slumber. I'm using the dibber, which is actually just a cut down handle, to measure out and to make the holes ready for the seedlings to be planted. These seedlings are Durham Early Cabbages, Cauliflower Snowball, some Purple Sprouting Broccoli and some Kale. There are also seedlings in this tray which are destined for the polytunnel which will go in in another week or so once I complete the next seasonal changeover in there too. We experienced a very harsh winter earlier this year with very low temperatures and over a long period of time. I lost quite a few plants in the polytunnel and in the greenhouse, but fingers crossed for the year ahead. And hopefully these seedlings have enough time to get established, to see them through, ready for our early crop and hopefully continued supply of brassicas throughout the year. And at this time of year, it's out with the Enviro mesh to keep the pests off the cabbages and it's in with the cozy fleece for over winter. This fleece should be thick enough to shelter the seedlings from any heavy downpours and it'll also keep the ground warmer and prevent any pests attacking them or birds uprooting the plants. So I'm going to take this small leftover harvest into the kitchen for preserving and I'm going to go and dry off. But thank you so much for joining me here today. Take care of yourself and others and I'll see you in the next video.